it's incredible when you consider there's 40, 40 plus, 47 in the competition, and uh, virtually all every horse rider combination is extremely good at what they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. And anyone, one of them on a given day can win. And so the set of circumstances that have to fall together, and what has to go, fall in line for one person to win. It's quite incredible. Yes, one person has a better chance than another because maybe their horse is a little better, or maybe they ride a little better, the horse suits them, or whatever. But really, even for somebody who looks like the odds on favorite, a lot of stuff has to really go right for them to win. A lot of luck involved. Well, luck, circumstances, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so when something like this happens, um, you, you, just, you just feel how, how lucky and how fortunate you are. Well, you're no stranger to the podium here. 1987, 1991 champion at the Masters. Here you are again a few years later. What is the secret to maintaining such a high level of international sport for so long? Well, I just really enjoy horses, and I, I love horses. That's why I started in the first place. I think we probably all have that in common. And uh, that's all I really do. Um, I have some outside business, which is kind of a hobby, but and we, we do a breeding operation at home, but with my son and daughter, we run a teaching, training, operation, competition, and so uh, it's really what I do seven days a week. It's my hobby, it's my work, it's my pleasure, it's my sport, it's everything all rolled into one. And uh, that, that wonderful book called The Outliers, there's a 10,000 hour rule. You gotta do something for 10,000 hours before you're ever any darn good at it. And I think I'm probably up around 20 or 30,000 hours, the, oh, truth, the, <laughs> truth, the truth be known. And, uh, and I guess I guess the other thing is I'm very much um, a student of the sport because I watch its evolution. It's changed so much over the years uh, in in such a wide array, array of ways. And you've got to stay on that evolution. You've got to stay on the engine of that evolution, or you'll get left behind. And so I study all these other riders, and I study the, their training methods, and uh, I have the highest regard for the, the young group of riders coming along. I call them young. They're in their 30s and 40s sometimes, but they're younger to me, and they're, they're that good. It's really amazing how good they are. I marvel at them, how good they are. And so when I take them on and get the job done, I feel even better about it. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Let's talk about the, the enormous payday and the massive prestige involved in winning this leg for our next Grand Slam of show jumping. What about Geneva? Potentially is it something you've considered before? Will you change your plan? I mean, this is a great series of majors. It is indeed, and uh, uh, Sue Grange and Ariel Grange were the owners of Dixon, and I will have a, a get-together and a discussion, and uh, circumstances certainly can alter plans. It wasn't Dixon's plan to go and do Geneva, but everything changes and um, today changed much. And uh, he's very healthy and sound and strong. And I, I think, I mean, we could probably make the logistics work if, if everybody's willing. What does it mean for a rider like you at this high level to have a prestigious and you know, very lucrative um, well, it's, it's a fantastic honor. Um, I mean, we, we, we all worked away at it so hard, and uh, any of these top riders, again, they're so different than they were 20, 30 years ago. They're all top athletes. They all go to the gym and they work out, and they're so, so serious. Not that the guys in the past weren't, but it's a little different focus. It's professional. Uh, focus is really brought to it, and uh, everybody wants the same thing, and they, uh, there's no stone left unturned. And so, to, to be involved in something like this is it's just incredible. I, I have really have no words to describe it. It's fantastic. Congratulations again. We'll see you in Switzerland. Thank you very much. And Ian, um, can you talk a little bit about Dixon and his personality and and um, how he felt coming into today after doing the Nations Cup yesterday? Yeah, for sure, and that's the tough part when we do the Nations Cup yesterday, which is two tough rounds, and then we come right back at them again today, and that was three rounds. That's a lot of jumping in two days, and what it really comes down to at that point is it comes down to heart and mind, and a horse has to really want to do it because they're for sure going to be starting to get a little tired and uh, thinking that this is a whole lot of work and a whole lot of effort and it's really the great ones that, that 
that rise to the occasion, and Dixon really rose to the occasion today, and he just felt better in every round, and I knew I had a, a player in my hands. If I could ride him, he was going to give me the effort, and he sure did. And um, this class, this is the third time that you've won it with a gap, obviously. Of a, yes, of a some while years, yes. Since the last one. <laughs> um, coming back and being in the victory gallop and being in the winner's circle, how do you feel and how does it how does it rank in your wins and your great career? It's got to be one of the very big ones. I always think, you know, to, to sort of go too hard to emphasize one risk taking away from all the others because there's been there's been a lot of them that have been so, so very very special for various reasons but this one is is an incredible thing to uh, to take on a horse that we, we acquired uh, a couple of year, a year and a half ago and we've been bringing him along carefully and we hoped he would grow into this and he has and so that's very rewarding in itself and uh, against this, this quantity of quality of horse rider combination to emerge on top is, is really something. Great, well thank you and congratulations. Thank you very yes. much.